Wherever you're joining us, will you one more time lift up the name of Jesus this Christmas? It's so easy to forget that he is the reason for the season. I mean, it just gets so busy, doesn't it? We get so distracted. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of, of, of presents to buy and, and, and busyness. And, and do I get the right gifts? And, and am I going to receive the, the right gifts? And hey, show of hands here, how many of you normal people open presents on Christmas Day? Okay, yeah, there you go. Okay, then how many of you impatient Christmas Eve people? Come on, I'm just kidding. Where are you at? Where are you at? Yeah. Yeah. No, look, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter when you open presents and your gifts, as long as you remember the whole reason why we give and we receive gifts is because we have received the indescribable gift of Jesus Christ from God. This is the reason why we celebrate. In fact, there's over 40 times in the New Testament that Jesus himself is called a gift. God has called many things. In fact, he's, he has many names and many titles. And I've been studying this for the last several months and even sharing a lot of those insights with you in the meaning of his name. His name is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. Jehovah Saba, the Lord of heaven's armies. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, to name just a few. The names of God are not mere titles. They're not fantasy. Th these reveal who he is and how he can relate to us. And, and we don't understand this to today as probably as much as they did in biblical times because names aren't as meaningful today. Like, I don't know, like, if you got a name that was very meaningful and thoughtful and maybe had something to do with your ancestors or something like that, but it is, sometimes that's the case, but very rarely is that the case. We go to a baby name book or something like that. I was reading about the names and just different names that the most popular names, and parents can be mean with this. You know what I mean? I just, what are you doing, okay? I, I read there was this one family by the name of, uh, their last name was Mann, M-A-N-N, -N. and so they just, you know, they, I don't think they were thinking about it too much, but they, were, they gave their kid, like in one of their names, family name, uh, their daughter was born, it's like, called her Anita, but she was named Anita Man. <laughs> Hopefully that's not prophetic, you know? <laughs> so here's, God is called, he has very many names, and, and in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, there's this prophecy that was given 600 years before the birth of Jesus. It says this, for to us a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called. He'll be called a lot of things, because there's not one name that could contain all that he is. So he'll be called a lot of things. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. These names are more than poetic. They're not fantasy. They don't just exist on a pretty... Christmas card. Let me say it this way. God has every intention of being this for you. This is who he is, and he wants to be in your life. He wants to be wonderful counselor. So I, I encourage counseling and going to a counselor. What does a counselor do? A counselor gets close to you, wants to know you, to understand you, so that they can give you sound, applicable advice. Wouldn't it be nice for an all-knowing God who not only knows you, but he saw what happened to you and why you feel the way you feel about it, who knows you completely, and then to give you advice. He's our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, who is all-powerful. See, we all have things in our lives that there really isn't a earth solution for, so you need something supernatural and powerful, and wouldn't it be nice to have in your corner a mighty God? He's not only willing, but able, an everlasting father. He's always present. Today, he sends the Holy Spirit to be with us and to never leave us or forsake us. Wouldn't you love that for the times that you feel alone, that you feel dark, that you would have an everlasting father, a relational God, a, a dad who loves you and, and who thinks the world of you? 
He's our everlasting father and prince of peace, something everybody is looking for, but a lot of people are looking for it in the wrong places, like drugs and different escapisms, trying to get away from the pain or erase the memory of what happened. But without God, many of us have realized all that stuff is temporary and only in reality compounds the pain. But he wants to be the one who's in charge, the prince of, the one who's in charge and rules the peace in our life. Regardless of what happens, he is prince of peace. And I think all of us want that. We want all of that. But then it comes in ways that is unexpected and we miss it. A child is born. A son is given. A gift to all mankind. The Gospel of Matthew records the birth of Jesus like this in Matthew chapter 1. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind already to divorce her, but quietly. So he didn't believe the story she told, I wouldn't have believed it either. You wouldn't either. You know what I mean? I don't blame him. She probably thought, you're crazy. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her, she wasn't lying, is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name, in Hebrew, Yeshua. Say Yeshua. That's his name. Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. This is his name. It was given to them. They didn't get to choose the name. This was a name that had been selected before the creation of all the earth and the world and anything that was created. This was the name. It was given to them. They they couldn't go to their ancestors. They couldn't go to the baby name book. They couldn't choose any other name. It was given. He shall be called. You're going to call him Jesus. Wouldn't it be weird if they just kind of, you know, They had the baby and they looked at, they're like, you know what? I know the angel said to name him Jesus, but he looks like a Keith. Wouldn't that have been weird? You know, when the word, like it'd be hard to worship, you know, don't get me wrong. I'd still worship if his name was Keith, you know what I mean? But it would just be weird, you know, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Keith. No, it's just, I'm sorry if your name is Keith, by the way, but you get it. You know what I mean? You get it. So why, 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 but why Jesus? Why why is this name that was predestined, why Yeshua? I've been studying these names, and I'd like to study this name. I believe there's some hidden gifts inside the name of Jesus that I'd I'd like for you to unwrap today. Here's the meaning of the name. Jesus means the Lord is salvation. His name is a prophetic declaration of his mission, something that maybe some of you don't know, But Jesus was actually a popular name, a very common name in first century Judea. It was much like today. Jesus is very popular. You know what I mean? It it was just a common name. And in the survey of theology, it it, it very eloquently captures the dual significance of the name of Jesus. It says this, he was from one angle, just another Jesus. And yet, in another sense, he was the true Jesus. The one who would live up to the meaning of this name in ways that no others could. Jesus, a a common name, born in a common place, in a manger where lambs actually would be born. God incarnate, made low and humble. Since it was impossible for man to actually reach the heavens, Jesus reached down to earth and became man. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 through 8 says it like this. Who being... In very nature, God, that's who he is, God incarnate, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant like like you and me, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus, the name that is both supreme and simple, Jesus, the name that is magnificent and meek. Jesus, the name that is both cosmic and close. Today, in this Christmas season, I just want to boast in and magnify the name of Jesus. And I believe hidden within his name, there is some gifts that maybe you don't realize how powerful 
his name actually is. There are seven, seven specifically, um, things that you have access to in his name that I want to show you. It's your Christmas gift. Amen? The gift that you can receive this season hidden away in his name. What are they? Number one, you have access to the throne room of God in the name of Jesus. What a beautiful thing that, that Jesus, his name, change your access level. You have access to the very throne room of God. A lot of times I think we, we, someone else needs to go there for us. There is no priest, no prophet, no pastor that can go for you into the presence of God. A lot of times some people will come to me and ask me to pray for them. And I love, I love praying for you. And I understand that you, need, you want people that have great faith praying for you, that know how to navigate the spiritual realm. I get that. But what you do need to understand, please hear me, child of God, you don't have any different access to God that I don't have. You have the same access. You have access to the throne room of God in the same name that I have. It's the name of Jesus. Jesus said in John 14 that he'll do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You, you, not me for you, but you may ask anything in my name and I will do it, Jesus says. You have that access. You have his name that brings you into the throne room of God. I love the way Hebrews chapter 10 says it. He says, and so, dear brothers, now we may walk right into the very holy of holies, where God is. This is the fresh, new, life-giving way that Christ has opened for us to let us into the holy presence of God. The holy of holies. In, in the Mosaic law, the law of Moses, in the temple, they would have this holy of holies. It was the innermost part of the sanctuary where the Ark of the Covenant would be. This was just a, a mirror of in the throne room of God in heaven. And there would be this high priest that would go into this holy of holies and make intercession on behalf of the people. He prayed for them. He would go and make sacrifices on behalf of the people of Israel, but he would have to do it continuously as much as the law required. He would go on behalf of the people and do such. But we're told in the scriptures that Jesus was the perfect lamb that was sacrificed, the once and for all sacrifice that no longer does there need to be any priest to go into the temple for us. You have access to the throne room of God in the name of Jesus. What a gift we have in Jesus. Here's the second thing the Bible says that you have. You can be healed in the name of Jesus. What a great gift. Just as the doctor prescribes medicine, the name of Jesus is our remedy, and it brings healing, listen to me, to your body, to your soul, your emotions, your mind, and your spirit. When, when the apostle Peter was was traveling in Jerusalem. He's actually on his way to the temple. There was this lame beggar, a man who could not walk. He didn't walk from birth, never took a, st a step in his whole life. He's begging for money, and Peter passes him, and some of you all know this story. He says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk, and this man gets up and walks to the amazement of everybody, and they're confused and questioning the miracle, and Peter tells them why. In Acts chapter 3, verse 16, it is by faith in what? In the name of Jesus. This man whom you see and know was made strong. Did you know the name of Jesus can make you strong today? Like if you're needing some strength, you're feeling weak, you're feeling disappointed, you're feeling depressed. The name of Jesus can make you strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you can all see. The name of Jesus is not just a common name. It's not merely symbolic. It carries the power within it of healing and restoration. I've seen cancer disappear in the name of Jesus. I've seen heart conditions normalize in the name of Jesus. I have seen lungs that were collapsed manifest new life and breath in the name of Jesus. You have healing in the name of Jesus. What a beautiful gift we have in his name. Number three, you have authority over spiritual forces of evil in the name of Jesus. 
not in your notes, but in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it tells us that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I don't know if you realize this, but the Bible says that there are dark powers at work in this world and that there are spiritual forces of evil at war against you. You have authority in the name of Jesus. His name extends to the realm of the spirit. His name is a mighty weapon against the forces of darkness. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter 10, verse 17, the 72 disciples returned from being sent out from, uh, with Jesus. They returned to him with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Demons flee. Darkness trembles. In the name of Jesus, victory is declared over every spiritual battle. The power of the name of Jesus is unrivaled. It has authority over sin, over sickness, over every force that is contrary to the kingdom of God. And as believers in Jesus, we stand on the foundation of his name. In fact, this next year, every year we seek God for a prophetic vision, the direction of, of, of his people, of where we, he wants to take us and lead us. And, and, and every year God is so faithful to give us vision, prophetic vision of where we're going. And I usually will tell you guys towards the end of the year of what that vision is. And so today I want to declare to you that 2024 will be the year of freedom in Jesus' name. That this is going to be a year, hear me and receive this, that the bondages and strongholds that have been nagging you, that even when you feel like you've overcome them and they come back again just to undermine you and limit you again and take you under, this year you're going to be free in Jesus' name. Every stronghold, every mindset, every limitation, demons are going to flee in Jesus' name. This is going to be the year of freedom. You know why? You have authority over every evil spiritual force in the name of Jesus. Number four, you have forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Some of you are still carrying around the, the weight of your past, the weight of your pain, the weight of your problems. Even, even many of you that love Jesus today, you're still carrying the weight of your shame and the weight of your guilt. Acts chapter 10, 43 says, all the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And so much power is the name of Jesus. Listen to me, you're not just forgiven of your past sins. His name is Alpha and Omega. His name is beginning and end. You are not just forgiven of all your past, you are forgiven of all your sins. It is erased, canceled, all debts. There is no penance. There is no penalty that God will put on you because he put it on Jesus. In his name, you are forgiven. And not only that, but connected to it. Write this down. Number five, you have salvation in the name of Jesus. This is what his name means. And, and when you read your New Testament, and you see this word salvation in there. Your New Testament was written in Greek. And the Greek word that is translated to English as salvation is sozo. And it means delivered rescued, and saved. A lot of people have a wrong concept of salvation. We think salvation was that one-time occurrence. I was saved in 2003, Pastor. You, that's, no, I get it, but yes, he did, but you need to understand that God did save you, is saving you, and will save you once and for all. Like, you got to understand, like, like, yes, you were delivered, and he wants to continue to deliver you, and will deliver you once and for all. This is what his name means. Salvation and forgiveness, they're closely related. Like there's no salvation without forgiveness. Forgiveness is God canceling the debt against us. But salvation is God delivering us from the eternal consequences of our sin. Let me illustrate it with a financial illustration here. The forgiveness is, is like God taking the documents of the debt against you and shredding them completely. Salvation is then God releasing you from the prison of the debtor, letting you go. Acts chapter 4 says it like this. Salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. 
You cannot be good enough for this. You cannot earn this. You, you cannot have salvation by good deeds. The Lord is salvation. Yeshua, Jesus. No other God can take away your sins. No other God has the power over sin and death. No other God saves. Yeshua, Jesus, the Lord is salvation. Are y'all receiving anything out of this today? There are so many gifts within this name that I hope that you would remember and receive. Number six, you have God's presence in the name of Jesus. Look, you don't have to go to a temple or to a church or to a confession booth to step into the presence of God. Jesus said, wherever you gather in my name, there I am in the midst. And in that Christmas story in Matthew chapter one, it continues like this. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they will call his name because one name can't contain it. His name will be called Emmanuel, God with us. See, a lot of you, a lot of you know the name of Jesus. A lot of you know Christmas and you celebrate Christmas. But what we need is a revelation of this name, Emmanuel, God with us. When you look at like even the study and the research of our culture and our society, what is, it, what is really revealing is this generation, these, the, this generation coming up, you guys, is so hungry for more. They're, they're, they have so much information, but information isn't producing the transformation. Information can't save you. Information alone can't. It is a revelation of the power of God alone that can bring transformation. This next year, in the year of freedom, we, we're in, being so intentional and strategic to create spaces where you can know, not just know about Jesus, not just know about him because I taught you or someone taught you or that you read it, but personally and powerfully, a pre Emmanuel, God with you. You have, you have God's presence. You don't need to, I'm glad you're here at church. I want you to come to church because I'd love to be a part of the journey of getting you closer to Jesus. But you don't need to go anywhere. You have God's presence in the name of Jesus. Number seven, the name simply above all names is Jesus. He is the highest name. This is what the Bible tells us about his name. Philippians chapter two, verse nine through 11. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name that would be written or uttered from all creation that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And he lists three places, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every knee will bow. Every knee, every heavenly host bows to the name of Jesus. Every being on earth will bow, whether now or later will bow to the name of Jesus. And everything under the earth, every, listen, every evil for spiritual principality against you bows at the name of Jesus. It is the name above every other name. Jesus taking on flesh. I love the way that C.S. Lewis puts it. He said, the son of God became man so men could become sons of God. There's no way for us to reach him. He decided to reach us so much power in his name what a gift we have this christmas in the name of jesus the apostle paul says it like this in romans chapter 10 verse 13 everyone who calls on the name will be saved in in the very last book of the bible it's it's called the book of revelation the apostle john writes this book and he writes it about the end times the end of all things and he's describing the people of God who have called upon the name and who are saved. And he gives this insight to what you and I would experience. Everyone who calls on the name will experience this event in, Roman, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. He says this. This is Jesus speaking to the apostle John. To everyone who is victorious, I will give some of the manna that has been hidden away in heaven. And I will give to each one a white stone. And on the stone will be engraved a new name for you that no one understands except for you, the one who receives it. This is a, one of those mysterious passages of Revelation. But theologians have a few thoughts about this. 
The Bible says that you're, you get a white stone if you call on the name of the Lord and are saved. Jesus gives you a white stone with a new name. There's, there's a few reasons, very symbolic here. That high priest that I was talking about that goes into the Holy of Holies and makes intercession on behalf of God's people, well, when he would do that, he was decorated and ordained with different, with different instruments. One of the things he had was a breastplate. On his breastplate were 12 stones. And these 12 stones represented the 12 tribes of Israel. And one of his responsibilities was to go into the Holy of Holies and to by name intercede and cry out for the children of God, the people of God. And so in, in Jesus giving you a stone, what he's saying is you are part of the family of God. You are a child of God. You belong here. There's also another symbol of this stone in the uh, ancient Greek culture of which, you know, John was writing in. When, when you were in a trial, like a, a trial by jury, if you were acquitted of the trial, the jury would give you a white stone. If you were guilty, you were given a black stone. So here, the, hey, this Christmas, what are you, you going to find in your stocking? A lump of coal? Okay, do you... Or will you call on the name? Will you call on His name? The name that is above every other name. The, the name in which demons flee. Darkness trembles. The name that changes your access level. The name by which you are forgiven. You are saved. Yeshua. Jesus. The Lord is salvation. What a gift in the name. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.